I start, just a warning, this is gonna go like a mile a minute, so sorry about that. But I will be repeating the claim that technology gives a positive influence on society and individuals. Uh, the first claim that the advocate made was that internet can quickly provide necessary information Two, that it has and continues to have positive effects on our health and mental health. And three, that it keeps the world safer. Technology keeps the world safer. And I want to introduce a problem in the advocate's argument, or argument before I get into the problems with the secondary claim because the main problem is in the claim that he makes, there is no real controversy about whether or not there is a positive effect of technology on our society. And ultimately, I cannot refute this claim because I can't deny that like good things have happened because of technological advancements. But rather, I will make the overarching claim that technology has negative effects on society and that I will be exploring controversies across a variety of technological advancements in my counterclaim. So let's get to the first secondary claim that he makes. The internet can quickly provide necessary information. Uh, the reasoning that he provides lacks substantial relevant evidence. He brings up a plethora of informational benefits with education, medicine, and emergency broadcasting, but he doesn't really substantiate these claims or adequately elaborate on them. The statistics he uses are credible. However, the information brought to light do not relate back to what he's trying to claim. It's more quantitative rather than qualitative, meaning that it gives insight onto how many people are using technology and the internet to gain access to information, but he doesn't evaluate what kind of effect it has and whether or not it's actually good and positive for society. And in particular, one of the pieces of evidence has a significant flaw. He claims that um, internet is good because people are able to access more medicinal information. Uh, but he fails to answer what people are actually using for this information or with this information. In the review of the very same research that he went over, the, P, the, the Pew Research Experiment, the large majority of people were using the information, the medical information they received for self-diagnosis, which is pretty dangerous. Cyril Kalai, a pro clinical professional from Harvard Medical School, believes that self-diagnosis is dangerous because without a background in medicine, people are prone to misinterpreting their symptoms, or symptoms. As a result, whatever medicine they choose to take could potentially worsen, or worsen their symptoms. And this minimizes the benefits that he brings up with medical information because medical information is being used for a dangerous practice, which is self-diagnosis. And a direct um, counterpoint to his claim that internet can quickly provide necessary information. Because of the internet, there is now a growing threat to the individual's right to privacy. In a, a recent scandal with Facebook and the Cambridge uh, Analytical, Christopher Weil, an expert overseeing the project, confirmed that Cambridge Analytical gained over 50 million Facebook users' private information without their consent. And this information was used in Trump's 2016 um, presidential campaign to manipulate the behaviors of voters and analyze them. And this is a direct example of how the internet's ability to gain access to information and give it out can threaten our basic human rights to privacy. Now, the next secondary claim he makes is technology improves our physical and mental health. Uh, once again, we come across the problem that he makes a bunch of claims, but he doesn't substantiate them. He says that there's a high percentage of success rates, efficiency, and um, cheaper health care, but he doesn't have any evidence to back this up. He also talks about wearable technology and how it's useful for like emergencies, but again, there is no evidence to back this up. And in relation to his first point, where he says that um, efficiency and health care is more accessible and cheaper, this isn't true in America. There's a great inequity between health, or health cost and health quality. In 2014, a study by the Commonwealth Fund said that in a global health study, America ranked near the bottom in all sections of quality, access, efficiency, equity, and the nation's natural or general um, state of health, even though it has the highest health expenditure per capita, which is 8500 per person. Or, yeah. And then a direct counterclaim to his claim that um, technology improves our physical and mental health is that the internet um, Cyberbullying is a byproduct of technology and is correlated to the growing suicide rates in America. Uh, two researchers from Florida Atlantic University Department of Criminal Justice reported that um, young victims of cyberbullying were more 
are two times more likely to attempt suicide than those who are not, and this is a direct counter against the notion that technology improves our mental health because it's actually deteriorating our youth and uh, leading to higher suicide rates. And the last secondary claim he makes is that technology keeps our world safer. He mentions GPS systems and how it makes a safe, or he leads us to safer routes and helps us avoid obstructions and dangers. And he brings up a statistic where it's 75 or 74% of people use GPS's on their phones. However, he doesn't cite this, so that completely negates the credibility of the statistic in the first place. And um, even then, a direct counter to the claim that technology keeps our world safer is that technology has made possible the creation of, of like the greatest threats to mankind, which is weapons of mass destruction. The most powerful bomb ever detonated was called the SAR Bomba, and it expanded over radius of 42 miles and completely demolished everything. And according to the international campaign to abolish nuclear bombs, there are 15,000 nuclear bombs in the world at this moment. And overall, we know that this risk still exists and we know what it's capable of as we have seen with Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the detrimental effects that had in World War II. And this is a direct counter to the notion that technology keeps our world safe. In light of the fact that technology like this is the very reason why our survival of our species and our planet is being threatened. So overall, technology does have negative effects that um, overshadow the positive. Thing. What would happen if that didn't exist? People would go bananas. Okay, the structural stuff is pretty good. Uh, most of the material on the first point really deals with counterclaims about how uh, people are using this information in uh, potentially problematic ways, um, or that, uh, that there's access to information that uh, is uh, potentially dangerous in some way, and I think those are good counterclaims. Um, you do challenge the lack of evidence that the advocate has on some of these points that it seems like it's largely just a uh, general assertion about these uh, particular benefits and uh, I think that that's a reasonable press to be putting on there and then for your counterclaims that you, you did have uh, some information to suggest there are problems like the self-diagnosis issue and people medicating themselves improperly I thought that that was okay the threat to uh, uh, privacy is uh, presented as kind of a in, if it's if this is a policy argument we call that as a disadvantage to uh, the access to technology there's a negative consequence that's going on here so it's a reservation issue it's a reason why we might want to reject the advocates position and um, I, that that there's a harm from that I think needs to be demonstrated a little bit more but the notion that people's privacy has been violated I think you do a pretty good job of that and it's not hard to find that sort of thing with technology, I mean, there's an example every day, I swear that it's a weekly or daily kind of thing. Here's a new breach, here's a new breach, here's a new breach. Uh, what, you know, Target's, all their customers have been made vulnerable. I'm sorry, this week it's Walmart, all their customers have been made vulnerable. Uh, this week it's, you know, AT&T, all their customers have been made vulnerable. So I think you could, you know, show that pretty easily. It's not that hard to come up with. Um, the physical mental issue, again, you challenge the lack of evidence that they have on this particular point. Um, which which I thought was was perfectly fine. The healthcare issue, uh, you get off on kind of this tangent about what the costs are for healthcare, and that access doesn't access to information doesn't necessarily equal access to healthcare. That's that's a reasonable press to be making, although I'm not sure that it really addresses the issue that the advocate's talking about. 
Uh, the cyberbullying is another one of those counterclaim arguments, and you've got some good information on that um, that suggests that it's a unique sort of thing. Uh, I, think, I think the general argument that you made at the beginning that suggests that there's not really much controversy about whether or not uh, increased technology has produced benefits, um, you were right about that. The question is, are the, the consequences or the costs uh, sufficient to overcome that, or is it a, a reasonable trade-off, or would we be having these kinds of problems anyway? I think we need a little bit more comparison on those issues. And then, I'm not exactly sure why you, it, it's important to challenge the source on the GPS statistic. You say, you know, it's got no credibility because it doesn't have any source on it. I'm willing to agree. I mean, I agree. They should source it, and that would increase its credibility. But I have very little doubt, personally, that people use their GPS on their phone. <laughs> I mean, so I'm not sure that you get that much from that particular challenge. I think the uh, better challenges have to do with the other issues that you're talking about. All right, and then uh, presentation-wise, so let's just uh, mention the nervous hands. You've got sweater puppets that you were making uh, while you're speaking, and it just looks a little weird. Uh, you know, all your anxiety is coming out in your hands, and you kind of wrap your hands in the sweater a little bit more. So, yeah, maybe maybe work on that. All right.